And the, the, the scripture that's going to drive this series is actually found in Revelations chapter 12, verse 11, the first part of verse 11, and it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And the hymn is talking about Satan, actually. And um, this is a powerful scripture because it's talking about how we defeat Satan. First of all, it's by the blood of the Lamb, but we all know that the blood of the Lamb is Jesus. Amen. And his blood that was shared for us on the cross. <clears throat> and there is nothing that can take its place. That's how we have our victory. That's how we endure our healing. It's from the blood of the Lamb. And his name is Jesus. And then, by the word of your testimony. Interesting word, that word testimony in the Greek, it is, um, totally slipped my mind. It is, I wrote it down. That's that perfect, right there. I'm absolutely minded in the whole way. It is the record and the report. The word testimony is the record and the report which comes out of our mouth. The record and the report that comes out of our mouth. So that's how we overcome. That's how we survive as Christians. Through what Jesus did for us on the cross and the testimony of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I wanted to share my testimony first. Um, not a lot of people know the real testimony. So I want to share mine today. If that's okay. A lot of people know that straight out of college, I had a chance to play in the NFL for seven years, and, and that was uh, that was a great opportunity. Everything was good. Life was easy. JD, not a lot of real cares and worries because I actually got to play the game that I love for a living, and not everybody gets an opportunity to do that. But because of that, because life was easy, because we had a great income, because everybody said hi to you. It gave me a false sense of a false sense of security. And the problem was I began to depend on what I did for a living more than I depended on God. And that's where we get into danger. Because I knew early on that God had a call for my life in ministry. I knew that when I was 18 years old. I, I, I just knew it. But because my dreams carried me in a different direction. I took what God wanted me to do, and I set it on the back burner. So everybody knows about that, but what they don't know is that when I was in Cleveland, and the coach didn't like Christians, is what we thought, because every Christian got cut, all of us. And when I got cut and had to come home and begin to deal with life on a different level, everything changed. My favorite scripture has always been, since I got serious about my walk with the Lord, God put Proverbs 3, 5, 7 in my heart. Yeah, 3, 5, and 6, that's 7, isn't it? But he always says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct your path. But I trusted <coughs> in what I did for a living instead of trusting God. I thought my own insight and my own understanding was enough. I no longer sought God for direction, and I was under the impression that I could do it on my own because of what I did. So you walk in on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday morning. You've been off Tuesday. It's week number one, and I just I got traded from Miami to Cleveland. By the way, I don't like Cleveland, not because I got cut, but. Leaving Miami 80 degree weather, going to the cold. That didn't agree with me. Side note. <laughs> so I walk in, and, and you know when you get cut in the NFL, there's, there's a guy, and we call him the accident. And when he walks up to you and says, hey, coach, need to see you. Take your playbook. You know you're, you get into your world. And so that's what happens. I walk in, I'm getting ready to go to the training room. Here come the accident. saying, the coach need to see you. And take your playbook. And they give you all these different kinds of excuses of, why you didn't make the team, and most of them are lies, by the way. And so, you know, here I am, got the drive from Cleveland back to Oklahoma City, calling tell me well, I got released, and, um, you know, we just hope for the best. And so I'm coming home, 
Now, by the way, back in 1995, I plainly heard the voice of God say, uh, no, that was 93, 94. We're sitting in Bible study. And I hear God tell me, like I'm talking to you, it's time to move on. But I didn't listen because when, you, when you're making some money, it's hard to hear God's voice. And so I get cut. I'm driving home. And now everything, and I said, well, no problem. I'm a good player. Somebody will pick me up. Somebody will call. It always happens. I got a couple more years left. I can make it out. We can make it work. And nobody called. Nobody called. And I'm watching guys on TV that I taught how to be a football player. Nobody called. <clears throat> so what do you do now? So okay, no problem. I move on. I try, try my hand in business. We started a record label in Oklahoma. <laughs> to me and Tammy I had an office down in Bricktown. Now I ain't got no more money coming in. Now all the money's going out. Well, we still ain't this going to work. And all the while I could hear God saying, this is not what I called you to do. It failed. I ended up, listen now, I ended up sleeping on my mother-in-law's floor, driving a Krispy Kreme donut truck. Because we lost the house. I tried to go back to college. That didn't work. So here I am. Mad at the world. I'm, I'm upset. And I said, God, I'm done. The church that we served at, I felt like I was being abused there. I said, that's it. If this is what you're going to do to me, fine. I'll do it my way. And so I began, I'm laying on my mother in law floor, sleeping. My kids are all piled up in one bed. My wife is sleeping on the couch. And you don't know. How bad I feel. Tam and I always talk about people don't understand when, when, when other folks have put you on a pedestal and then you got to experience the fall. That's more than a lot of people can handle. I was this close. I was this close to losing it. And I'm driving this creepy cream truck from 4 in the evening to 3.30 in the morning to Alphys and back and I started out by listening to preaching on the radio. I turned it off. Forget it. It's over with. And so God said, okay, well, I got your attention here. So we ended up, we moved out of my mother-in-law's house. We had a little house over in Midwest City. And, uh, you know, I'm still just going through the motions. Going through, have you ever been there going through the motions? And I remember when it hit the bottom. I was working uh, as a maid, taking care of other people's houses, and wasn't making a lot of money. Tammy was teaching at the school. We were down in one car, and I had kept the car. When I came home, Tammy was fired up. She was mad. Hope she don't mind me saying this. And uh, I picked up, and we got to the house. Our lights was off, and she drove off. I drove to her mama's house. That's it. You know, we were arguing and bickering. And I sat there in that dark house, mad at the world, upset. Didn't know what I was going to do. If this is what you got intended for me, God, there is no way I'll ever fool with you again. I'll do it my way. And so you begin to try other stuff, you turn to other things, you do all kind of stuff, and nothing seems to work. And I'll never forget God said, Ronald, I'll never take you from something to nothing. I'll always take you from something to something better. You got to trust me. Amen. You got to trust me. Because through all of these things, all of these struggles, all these ups and downs, I lost my trust. I said, God, here it is that I prayed back in 92 for you to save my mom. She died of cancer. I prayed for this. It didn't happen. Why should I trust you? Why should I put my confidence, why should I seek for safety and security in you when every time it seems that you've let me down? God said, I will never take you from something to nothing. I will always take you from something to something better. And all the years of frustration, all those years of heartache, all those years of feeling like I was disappointed was all because 
what he put in my heart. He said, I didn't call you to those things. I didn't call you to live this life. I called you to live this way. You remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 7, bro? 3, 5, and 6? I said 7. I must need to include 7 in that thing. <laughs> he said, do you remember sitting at that table in Pittsburgh when I said walk by faith and trust in the Lord with all your heart? Do you remember that? And I said, Lord, yes, I do. Have you been doing it? Because I had learned to only depend on me. I had learned to only trust what I could see. I had learned to only trust what I could do, what I could handle with my hands. And God was plainly saying, that's not what I've called you to live. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. So your job is to walk by faith and not by sight and to trust me above all. Have you been trusting me? And when God put me on the spot, I had to come clean. I had to say, Lord, I haven't been trusting you. I've been upset. I've been mad. I've been blaming you for not doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Anybody relate to that? Yes, sir. I've been blaming you, God, for taking me through all this trouble when I when I didn't do what you asked me to do in the first place. And I've been blaming you, God. I'm sorry. I'll never forget when I fell on my knees and said, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm glowing. I've, I've got myself in this situation. But Lord, I need you to help me get out because yeah. I can't do yeah. it, God. You've seen what I've done with my life. You've seen what I've carried myself. And God said, I told you a long time ago, I got you. Now get up off your knees and do what I told you to do. Because what God had to do is he had to take me through a process and <clears throat> clean out. Have you ever had a swimming pool and you enjoyed it all summer and you never called the maintenance man and one day the pool turns green or yellow instead of, instead of the color it's supposed to be? Because all that stuff that you've been just collecting is building up in, in the garbage tank and you've never cleaned it out. God said, I had to get you cleaned out. Because I couldn't use you the way I wanted to use you. I couldn't let you do what I wanted to do. Why? Because you had all this junk from your life built up. So I had to take you through all of these things and get you cleaned out. Here's what I'll say. It's easier to do it God's way for God to have to clean you out. Amen. Because if he cleans you out, if, if he sends you through a cleansing process, it's going to be rough. But he always reminded me, Ronald, I'll never take you from something to nothing. It will always be from something to something better. But we have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to my understanding. In all of my ways, acknowledge God and he will direct my path. So what happened? God had to put me in a place where I could meet a Tony. God had to put me in a place where I could meet a Mary and a Lance and a Jeff and a Shen, a Keith and a Charles Epp, a Kerr. A JD. He had to put me in a place that was conducive or the right environment for me to do what he called me to do. Because anytime that you're in the wrong place trying to do the right thing, it'll never work. That's right. Anytime you put yourself where God didn't place you, it will never work. And God said, you can't reach your full potential and with this group of people. you got to move and let all that old stuff go. Everything that you're trying to hold on to from the past is useless. And you've got to let it go. Why? Because I'm taking you somewhere. You can't see it, but you got to trust me. You thought that old stuff was good, but you wait till you get to where I'm taking you. Amen. And so God said, I got to get you ready. I got to clean you out. You got too much junk in you. And see, what happened was, because people were screaming your name on Sundays and wearing a jersey around town, you get what I call ego, edging God out. And that's where I was. I was so big, my dad, my dad said, too big for your own britches. And you know what happens when you're too big for your own britches? <laughs> Daddy got to tighten you up. And so that's what God was doing. <laughs> he was taking me through something and helping me to understand that you've gotten too big for your britches. And I've got to knock you back down the side because your, your head can't fit through the door because it's too big. You ain't nobody. You're a country boy. Remember that? 
running around Phoenix in New York, riding in limos and jumping out. We in town, we used to go out the evening. Oh, y'all ain't got to wait, Mr. Moore. Come on to the front of the line. Hey, go to your head. But so God had to remind me of the, the gift and the call he put in me. So we went through the process. And I landed in a life group full of people that cared, that genuinely cared. Had friends that genuinely cared. Had people in my life that wasn't necessarily out to get me. Because I had become so isolated. Because everybody that was around me had their hand down. So I became isolated. God said, I can't use you isolated. I can't use you closed off. I can't use you when you feel like everybody's out to get you. I can't use you with all that bitterness and hatred you've got in your life. Now, I remind you, I knew that God called me into the ministry when I was 18 years old. But because of all the things, the hurt, the heartache, the disappointment that had built up, God said, I can't use that because it will come out when you share with people. It will come out when you minister to people. So I've got to take you through a process. But your job is to trust in me with all your heart. And it's interesting that that word trust means to find safety and security and satisfaction in God. Other than finding it where I had been finding it. So I landed in a life group of people who cared. And I still had no intentions of ever doing this. No. This is the furthest thing from my mind. No way, no how. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. Not going to do it again. But because of God and his goodness and his grace and his mercy, once he got all the old stuff out and began to fill me with his grace and his love and his mercy, he said, now, do you remember 1993 or 94, sitting in your living room with Bible study, the seed that I planted in your heart? I said, yeah. He said, now is the time. And that's why you are here. <laughs> because of something God put in me years and years and years ago. A little seed that says there's too much division in the church. It's too, it's too separate. Where in the Bible did it say that we can't worship together? Because of the color of our skin. He said, you look in the stands every Sunday, you see every race, creed, and color screaming your name. The church needs to be that way. Amen. And because of that seed that ran out of the tunnel in Cowboy Stadium in 1993, or maybe it was 94, I can't remember, that he put there. And it took me through all that stuff. But God never failed on his promise. Here's what I'll tell you from the bottom of my heart. Today, I'm enjoying life more than I have ever enjoyed life. Now, do I still have my faults? Do I still have my shortcomings? Do I still need to grow? Yes, I do. I'll be the first to admit it. Tammy and I have problems and issues that come up all the time. Why? Because of me, mostly. But God says, I will never, if you don't remember nothing else, remember this. I will never take you from something to nothing. It will always be from something to to something better. Our job is to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Listen, and don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own way of thinking. That's what got me. Because I depend on my way of thinking. In all of your ways, acknowledge God. In other words, put Him first. Let God be the number one priority in your life. Because here's the guarantee. He shall. The word shall is a binding agreement in the Greek. That means it will happen. No question, no doubt about it. He shall direct your footsteps. And God has walked me through maze. But now I'm in a place where I can see a little clearer. Because God is directing my path. My challenge today is that if you've been in the valley, if you've been going through, and it don't look like nothing is ever going to happen, trust in the Lord with all your heart, because he will. It's a guarantee. If you delight yourself, God will take care of you. Amen. 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 Let's pray.